Just fucking do it. Subscribe now. Uh, so you play, when in Rome, do what the Romans do. Well, and some of you are going to be in little podunk parts of the world, and some of you are going to be in the big city. The big city slickers, you know, Southern California is different than New York. You know, and even though I, I want you to have the best lawyers, but, uh, the, you know, they've got great lawyers in L.A. too. Um, so, and, and there is always a home field advantage. Well, I'm trying to say, there's always a home field advantage. When you come from, you know, uh, the Yankees up north, which they still call in the south the Yankees up north, when Yankees up north lawyers come down to the south, I mean, I think they got a death wish. Uh, they should hire as co-counsel southern lawyers. And that's just the way it is. And your board will know that. No, oh, we don't have to go to the mentally strong people. Now, this is a shitty thing to say for some of you. I would rather have you strong and wrong rather than right and weak. I have won more things that, that I've been wrong, but I've been strong. Don't confuse me with the facts. Rightness doesn't always win. Now, I'm not talking about illegal versus legal. I'm talking about, you know, See, our deals have to be moral, ethical, and legal. And moral and ethics swing in the wind, depending where you are in the world. And that's why I don't want anybody rolling up anything that doesn't have a strong rule of law. Strong rule of law. And uh, for those of you that are from different parts of the world, uh, uh, you have uh, ethnicity uh, bias, shall we say. Um, that won't make up for it if it's illegal. But again, ethics and moral are swinging the wind. Uh, and your board, senior enough, will know that. Senior enough will know that. All the board should have, if they've been with big companies, they've got litigation experience. But remember, one of the questions you ask them, has there ever been anything in your career that could preclude us getting into financing? That's a nice way of asking, have you ever been in trouble? And if they hesitate at all, then you got to drill down. But that's a pretty easy question, right? And then I told you the example, unindicted co-conspirator. Uh, and, the, uh, and then you heard um, the bitch say that the chairman came back and said, oh, I've got a conflict. Several weeks later, he probably got a better offer. Yes, sir, in the back. What what was the deal with the uh, board member that had moved out and then she found okay. something? Okay, she uh, used to live in Dallas-Fort Worth, but the healthcare center, more or less, of Texas is Houston. You know, they've got thousands and thousands and thousands of all these things we've been talking about rolling up. And so she moved and was going to close her first deal in uh, Houston. Her CFO and her COO moved to Houston from Dallas-Fort Worth on their own. They followed her. She didn't ask him to move. And uh, when, um, and then the deal cratered. And then, so she had to get a job, and her husband had to get a job, and her kid was now transferred in her junior or senior year of high school. And so she's got a job. And, the, um, and then we find out, or not we, she finds out that uh, the, uh, the COO had been part of some investigations and had, um, not on our watch, uh, had um, lied about the sexual harassment case, uh, had lied, uh, was changing contract dates, and two, three thing, two, two or three other things. Now, it would only take one of those things. I would have blown the fuck out, okay? Uh, so uh, the Viking is not as tough as she pretends to be. Uh, and so, but he moved, and she didn't have the stomach to uh, fire him. And um, he, he moved away from his job, his wife moved away from her job. Uh, they sold their house at a loss. They bought another house that was more expensive and, and a bunch of stuff, which is all bullshit. That's your problem, kid. That's not my problem. You were the one asshole that decided to move, not me. Now, was he in trouble at the other? I don't know, anything. But then she, she, had, she hesitated to fire him. It took her seven or eight weeks. 
uh, and I only find, found this out after the fact, but uh, a guy that we have a lot of respect with named Raymond, she called him and said, you know, what would Dan do? What would you do? And I, I presume Raymond said, we got to fucking fire him. There's no question. I mean, he's got done this stuff. And so she practiced with him, firing him. And uh, Raymond says, you're ready. You're ready for the big leagues, kid. And so she went in and it only took, you know, 40 seconds or 60 seconds and, and he was gone. But, um, and that happens. Um, but now, I, you know, uh, the Viking doesn't believe in virtual management. I don't either. I like to have my eye on everybody. You know, the, uh, I'm not as bad as some, but I'm, 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 I'm pretty uh, hands-on. When I was a manager, I'm pretty hands-on. Uh, it's not like I, I don't believe in breaks and shit like that. I believe in, uh, I'm like Netflix and, and, uh, and uh, Siemens. You have, this is the outcome I want on the 1st of April. I'm not interested if you can't reach the outcome. You, resi you resign if that outcome isn't achieved. You can come to work no days or 24-7. We will have that outcome or you're gone. That's the kind of manager I am. And I'm not bullshitting. <laughs> when I used to be like this as a young guy, I said, well, I looked young. One time I looked young. I know it's hard for you guys to believe, but one time I really looked young. That's why I grew a mustache and all that shit. Uh, and they said, well, the kid doesn't know what he's talking about. Ah, he was an officer, so what? I mean, yeah, you know, he, he never shot anybody or what they thought. And then when I fire him, I mean, everybody was an upheaval. First person you fire, um, it's like the first time you're going hunting. And the uh, first buck you get or deer, and then they, they, you spread the blood on your forehead. I ate the heart of the first thing I killed while I was still pumping blood. I, I've got pictures of it someplace. The first time you fire somebody, if you ever get used to firing people, you, you should retire because it's not right to feel good about that shit. But it shouldn't, it shouldn't bother you so much you can't do it. You know, in combat, there's always collateral damage. You know, some people say there's always gonna be, uh, when you make an omelet, you know, there's always, those are all cheap cliches. But uh, when you fire somebody the first time, it's gut wrenching. It is. The uh, you should paint yourself up like the put the you know you're not taking their blood or anything. But the uh, but in the old days they just killed you. That's when I should have lived. Uh, I'm about fifty thousand years uh, too late. Um, another question. Who's my five thirty? Six. Six thirty. When it was 5.30, 6, 6.30. Oh, yeah. What do you mean again? You're, you're, volunteering. <laughs> you're volunteering for a second thing. Um, any questions about anything? So you got the board all sealed up. Like sex, it all comes at the end tomorrow. Um, the, uh, tonight's uh, flick will uh, surprise a few of you. Uh, the uh, we and your homework is your goals and affirmations. Um, and we will go through the goals and affirmations. Um, I, I, first ask, I first ask for volunteers and nobody raises their hand historically. And then I'll say, okay, you, sweetie pie, or them, you know, Baldy or whoever. Um, and the, uh, and it's, it's really important. Uh, I will not say your affirmation on tape for you to listen to. I don't do that. Uh, but some of the kids go to five for or 10 for, you know, the, the people that you can hire online that have, uh, you know, uh, soothing type voices. Uh, a lot of people uh, have done that. Uh, I have kept no record to see if they're any more successful than you taping them yourself if you want to tape them and listen to them. I do know categorically, however you do it, uh, whether you tape and listen or you read them at night, they are absolutely diabolically successful. Um, and there's, you know, there's nobody, just like I tell you, almost all my mentees meditate. I didn't, I don't. But all my mentees do affirmations. All. Some do them 10 times a day, some do two times a day. 
maybe some of the uh, senior people now only do it once a day like myself. But my day is not complete. I fall asleep after my affirmations and goals. I fall asleep saying my prayers, you know, for decades. And, the, uh, and, and they work. And they're really tremendously uh, powerful. Not just for QLA model, but for accomplishing things in your life. And the sooner you get your kids on goals and affirmations, the better. Remember, self-esteem is built the first seven or eight years. Um, the sooner they start believing more in themselves, uh, the, uh, you can see the dynamic change. Um, uh, Leanne and Graham are bringing their 14-year-old kid, even though he's been listening to me uh, for four or five years uh, since he was nine or ten. Uh, but the kids that have been doing this don't sound the same. They don't act the same. And it's, it's quite remarkable. You had your hand up. Yes, sir. It's kind of unrelated, but related. What's some affirmations that you would um, have a kid say? Oh, okay. Um, I know, and these are, some of these are big ones, from about three or four, depending on how, depending on how mature the kid is. Like I was a grab-ass fuck-up as a kid. That nobody thought, that, I was, nothing about me was mature. Uh, until I, uh, I realized that I, uh, I, I could make babies. That, that's the first step of my maturity, which is a shitty thing to say. But three, four or five-year-olds, um, I know I am happy saying my affirmations, and sometimes you can't use affirmations, you have to use goals because they can't do the word affirmation, uh, knowing that it, it will help me build my self-esteem. Because kids, you can ask a 10-year-old, he doesn't know what self-esteem is. Well, I mean, I'm being slightly tongue-in-cheek. Some of you in this fucking room don't know what self-esteem is now. But, uh, you know, I am happily learning how to be a confident man or woman. And now they may say it, because you can't say man or woman. But, you know, um, and I don't believe in that. Um, I, I, I am thrilled, uh, and uh, I am thrilled at being, now, I, I cheated. I am thrilled at being the apple of my father's eye. So I can have a little control of the bitch, you know, which is going down the road. That didn't work out for me because she's a little me. But uh, she's never told me to fuck off or piss off. But she's come close. She's come plenty close. Um, I am. Um, I enjoy uh, learning about life skills with my brother. If you got two kids that are close to each other, okay, life skills. Now. Um, I know when I was four years, I didn't know what life skills, and she, they won't either. But they're learning the words, they're, they're learning the verbiage. Um, uh, as you saw in Nelly, he has once, once a week on Sunday. Uh, they go to church, they do QLA, and then they go play cricket. Uh, um, I know John Robinson has like, a, not a mass, but a little thing every morning uh, when the kids are getting ready for school. Um, and it works. I mean, the kids... All the shit they got available to them now on the internet, it's a lot of it's bad shit. And some of the little kids know how to get on the black web and shit like that. I don't know. You know, I, I, I'm one step above knowing how to turn on the computer. But there's a lot of ugly stuff out there. Of the super smart, you still have affirmations. Um, I enjoy having on a high IQ, I enjoy being intellectually different. I wish that I knew I had an IQ instead of a fucking dunce cam I'm wearing. I may sue the L.A. Uh, school district yet. Since you're feeling sorry for everybody 40, 50 years later, you know, maybe you feel sorry for me and give me a billion dollars uh, 60 years later. Yeah. The, uh, and kids normally, they, they want to be liked by other kids. Okay. But why not have them be liked by the right kids? You know? Uh, now, in my neighborhood, uh, as bad as I was, I was as good as they had. As bad as I was, getting in trouble all the time. But um, our children that went to, you know, great schools, arguably great schools, knew who was the right kind of friend that daddy and mommy would accept and who was the wrong kind. Now, I'm told, kids say, they're my friends, it's my choice. I want to have a life or something like that. Now, I'd be tended to smack them in the face 
And now if you smack them in the face, you go to jail. But somehow you want them to differentiate between, and it's not elitist, you want them to differentiate between good stuff and not so good stuff. I wouldn't call it bad stuff because somebody's bad stuff is another person's good stuff. But you want them to know that they're different. They're different in a good way, not different in a freakish way. Uh, I have a, a cousin who, uh, uh, not by blood, but by marriage, uh, who was like a, an Einstein. And they turn, well, they didn't turn him into, his parents helped turn him into a fucking freak because he felt bad because he, he could do all this shit that nobody else could do. And so, so the kids didn't want to have anything to do with him. But if you send them to smart schools, where everybody's smart, um, the, uh, but I, I probably wouldn't have turned out to be sitting in front of you meatheads if I had known, because uh, well, first of all, I wanted to be a priest. That's a God honest truth. <sighs> I'm not sure, sure I would have been such a great priest, but I would have tried to be the fucking Pope then, because that's in my, in my nature. I'm not sure the Catholic religion would be ready for Pope Pena, okay. I like the ring of it, but uh, Pope Pena. But it's all right for them to be smart, and it's all right for them to be different. My mother and most of our mothers wanted you to just fit in. Yeah. Michael Pilarczyk has an app now with the uh, affirmations and meditations. Yeah. Pillar fuck? My boy. Another one of my boys. Now, he's on the opposite end of me. Uh, but I got an email from him, and I, I posted it. He says, thank you very much for what you taught me. And when he bought that thing down on the island of these, uh, Mallorca, where is it? Okay, where? he bought this big place. And uh, I did a seminar maybe two years ago, and I did it three years ago. Uh, and the, the guys in the audience are on a different wavelength than I am. Although a lot of them come here. Oh, and, and, and Michael says, no, you're, you're on the hard end. You ought to go see my mentor, Dan, because, uh, you know, he's, uh, you know, six hours a day. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just, you know. But he was not like that uh, before. No, but I, you know, when I got him 25 years ago, I think, 25 years ago, he was a money-grubbing, fucking whoremongering, uh, of course, I, I'm confusing Pillar Fuck with somebody else. I know his, knew his first wife. I still know his first wife. And he came here. Uh, he's been here three times. And the, uh, he, he's transformed. Uh, but he wants to make money, but he wants the soft end of accountability. Soft, and there is a soft end. I don't teach it, but there is a soft end. And a few of the kids uh, have, uh, that's more their personality. Fine, you know, that's not my personality, you know. I'm a Tiller of the Hun kind of personality. I'm not, you know, uh, Walt Disney. Although Walt Disney, the icon was a bastard. I bring up Disney because of Disneyland. But, uh, uh, but let them know it's okay to be super smart. And do the best you can, which is kind of a cop-out, to put them around super smart people. Because it rubs off. Super smart rubs off on super smart. Now, and uh, I'm not saying that everybody that I went to school was a dipshit. But almost everybody I went to school was a dipshit. I mean, how do I get a six-pack of beer? Um, how do I get a bottle of whiskey? Well, Penny has got a phony ID. He can get a case of whiskey, which is true. Uh, the, um, how, do, how do I get laid? Well, Penny knows how to get laid. Uh, okay. what, what a great you know, uh, mantelpiece I, I set. And that's why when all these people came up to Sally, are you nice to him? He deserves the best. And Sally, what the fuck is this? Why'd you bring me here? But uh, yeah, I wish that somebody had done what I'm discussing with you. All my dad didn't want me to get dead. That's it. And I tested that every week. <laughs>